I know, you're looking at me and you're thinking, why is Lisa from accounting up there? <laughs> After all those young, sexy, interesting people. Sorry, you're stuck with me. Okay, so um, like six months ago, my husband Keith and I are walking in Soho on West Broadway, and it's one of those, you know how in the spring when it just gets warm enough to walk, like everyone's out, like you have no place to be, but you just start like wandering around, it was one of those days. So we're like meandering, looking to go for brunch. We don't really eat brunch, but we're like looking because it's beautiful out and we've been sequestered all winter. And it's super, it's so crowded downtown that it's like playing Frogger, like to walk, like down the street, you gotta like, anyway, while we're walking, we're not like, I don't know how far we are. I see Jack, oh my God, okay. Now Jack totally broke my heart and stomped on it. 30 fucking years ago. <laughs> but he looks gorgeous because men, fuck you, you all, none of you age. We all have like shit going on and he's really good looking and he's tall and he still has good posture and he has a blonde wife. And I know that it's him right away because, okay, let's be real. I don't know about you guys, but when I have spare time, I got a lot of spare time. I'm looking up and just kind of looking around Facebook and see what happened to everyone who failed me, who <laughs> left me, <laughs> who dumped me at the curb. And Jack was always on the list and he's quite cute. So I see him right away and we get to that point where you know you kind of want a duck, but we're too close for a duck, neither one of us. And he sees me and he, I could see he recognizes me. Not that I think that he's following me on Facebook, I know he's not, but <laughs> I look kind of the same, only bigger and stupider, but like, like sort of the same, only more exaggerated version of myself. So we have that kind of greet meet you get when you run into somebody that you're not sure you really want to see. Okay, so he's got his spouse, I've got mine. Now we do this thing that I know you've done, when you see someone that you've had sex with but a long time ago, and when you see them now, you don't want to really hug them tight, because you don't necessarily want like the titties and the toolbox and everything to like kind of match up. So you kind of do -si do and you kind of air hug and you square dance around to say, hey, hi, hey. So we do that and Keith is looking amused. He's like, you're a jerk. And his wife is like, really? You went out with her? Like I could see. All right. So we start to talk, and then we do that thing where you go, hey, what have you been up to? And I say, well, it's been 30 years. I have kids. I've been married twice. I had a business. I don't have one anymore. I'm doing a lot of stuff. And he says, well, I've been, you know, I don't, he was a drummer. I mean, he was the sickest, sexiest drummer. He said, but now I've been touring with a show. It's a one-man show, and I sing, and I tell stories, and I write my own stuff, and it's doing really well. And that's when I say, I know. <laughs> I know! I know! I said, I know. Okay, now you can't get out of an I know. And I know means I know. I knew. Okay, so it's polite, but I'm thinking, oh, you are so busted. Okay, so here's the story. The reason I knew is because I live in Westchester, and one day I was like driving to some like mini mall, and I see this huge sign at the JCC in White Plains, or I don't know where, with his fucking picture. And it says, a Jew grows in Brooklyn. <laughs> okay, now, it's his face, it's him. I don't want this guy, my Jack, who now I might add is called Jake. Somehow, in the <laughs> he thinks that changing a vowel and a consonant will make him, I don't know, give him more gravitas or sexier or better playwright. So Jack has now become Jake. And I see him, and I'm thinking he's going to be at the Jewish Y. Do I want to see him telling stories like Billy Crystal when he was like the sexiest dude I ever went out with? He was the hottest guy. He just made me feel like I had possibility to be somebody more than who I am. Okay, now let me explain. All right, so it's the early 80s, and I'm kind of like a disco rat. I go to Studio 54 and Xenon, and there was this one club that we all loved. It was called the Red Parrot. Now, if any of you are old enough to have been in New York back then, it was on West 57th Street, like all the way west, and it was huge, and it was beautiful, and you could dance there and do drugs and smoke cigarettes inside because we all smoked everywhere, and their little hook was they had a big band. Like, not like small, like 
we're talking Dorsey, we're talking Miller, big band, and they would play at night. Now, I was a dancer and I wanted to be an actress, so I really, really had appreciation for this. Most of those skanks at that club, <laughs> I mean, they were like doing poppers and snorting shit, and they were like, ee, ee. I was like, ah. okay, so this one night, it's the early days. Now, I had just come back from Club Med, which was a thing back then. We used to go to Club Med. Now, it's all right. So I came back from a Club Med, and I was very swarthy. I looked really good for them. And I had a lot of hair. And I had this rawhide halter top with feathers on it, like Cher when she was with Sunny, like really classy shit. And I thought, I can't waste all this. I need to go out dancing. And my roommate did not want to come, and I said, fuck that, I'm going by myself, I'm going to the Red Parrot. So I took my hair, and I took my halter, and I went prancing on off to 57th Street, and I got into the, it's never a problem when you're a girl to get into these clubs, they need more girls, it's not a big deal. So I go in, and it's packed, and they're playing, you know, and, there, and there's this guy, the drummer, with the hair and the sweat, and he's doing sing, sing, sing on the drums. I mean, talk about a sex call. When, you, <laughs> when there is a man with drumsticks, and he's into it, I mean, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but you could, I would go to the end of the earth for a guy with a pair of drumsticks. So, and I see him, and I'm like, I want him. I want that. It's like I have owned him. Now, meanwhile, there were millions of other girls there, and they're all thinking the exact same thing. And I'm like, no one's getting in my way. So everybody's like dancing, and I can see the girls there. We have like our lip liner and our gloss, and we're, we're working it and shimming, and they're doing their poppers, and everybody's happy and smoking. And, and I'm like, all right, I gotta, I gotta make this work. All right, so they get a break. You know, bands get a break, so they get a break. So I run to the bathroom. I gotta tidy myself up. Meanwhile, my loins are on fire like in a romance novel, because I know I'm gonna get this dude. Now, meanwhile, when you go to the bathroom back in the 80s, you can't get a stall because everybody's doing drugs in the stalls. So, like, you can see, like, everyone has the mirrors out and they're doing coke and everyone, and it's like, whatever, you wait. Okay, so we go to the bathroom and I come out, and then I kind of saunter over to the bar in my halter top, and Jack slash Jake, he's really Jack, he comes right over to me and he says, hi, just like that. And I'm thinking, yes. Yes, he saw me in my tacky queen's outfit. Yes. So he says, you know, have you ever been here before? I said, no. I said, you're a great drummer. We start talking. And without much, he says, can I buy you a drink? Yes. We start drinking. And then he says, um, I have one more set. Show this dog. <laughs> if you can wait, maybe we can meet up afterwards. OK, sure. Now listen, this is the 80s before AIDS. Herpes was it. That was all we worried about. <laughs> we were fucking everybody. I once had sex with a guy on my roof because I was locked out of my apartment. I'm not kidding. It was a thing. We did that. That we just, sure, I'll wait. Okay. So I'm thinking, like, all you skanky girls think you're so cool. This skank is going home with the drummer. <laughs> oh, I knew. It was on. Oh, it was on. All right. So the night goes on. He's playing his... Stuff. He's really good. A lot of rhythm. A lot of rhythm. All right, so the night's over. And he says, all right, let's go. It's like 2 in the morning, and I'm so excited. All right, so we get a cab. He lives down. He lives right here. He, li he lived on McDougal. It's like right here. So he says, all right, let's go downtown. And I was like, fine. And we start ch ch chatting in the cab, and he asks me what I do, and at the time I was still a dancer. And he says, and this is important, drummers and dancers get along well because you know about the rhythm. Yes, yes, oh yes, dancers and drummers, okay. All right, so we get to McDougal, we get to his place, fourth floor walk up, no problem, I'm young. I don't have an issue with this, dark, no lights in the hall, and it's like the walk up buildings we all know, where architecturally speaking, not good. Like nothing's working. It's like the banister doesn't meet with the, the, the thing, and it's like, you know that somebody, one bad fall, there's going to be a death in that building. I don't care. I'm going up. I'm having sex with this dude. All right, so we get up. He opens the door, and it's dark, and it's cluttered, and it's fabulous. And he has this beautiful, very old dog, you know, with like a one eye, one like filmy eye. <laughs> and then he has like photographs of his 
like of his tanta, you know, and his aunt and his mom, and he's like a nice Jewish boy. And then he has like sheet music everywhere, and it's like, yes. And lots of fur from the dog. And he says, I gotta walk my dog. And then he lifts the dog. Because he's gotta carry the dog down four flights. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm marrying this man. Any man who can carry a dog and play drums. Oh, we're, we're, this is it. All right, so he comes back up, and he's so cute, and he's so sweet, and he's got like big brown eyes and lots of brown hair, and he's got those gnarled drummer hands. If you ever meet a drummer, they have very bad hands. They have like calluses, and they're just a mess. They're really sexy hands. They're like all fucked up. And so, and then his bedroom isn't really a room, it's like an alcove, and it's one of those loft beds but the bed is so close to the ceiling, so there's not a lot of Kama Sutra or like, just kind of, and he's tall, so you can't do a whole lot, but it was fine, it was great. Now, he did say in his, you know, just in his, on his behalf, that he had been dating someone for a long time, but they were taking a break. You know what that means, right? That means I'm cheating on my girlfriend with you. But I didn't hear that, I just heard you taking a break, you're so responsible that you told me, fine, okay, for the next four or five months, we went everywhere together. We had so much fun. The guy was, he was smart and funny and he could drum. He used to play basketball right on 6th Avenue, right in this neighborhood where that fencing is. I would hang on the fence like one of those little unadopted pets that Jules sings about. <laughs> like, I was so stricken by this guy. Okay, so finally, the inevitable was obvious. I mean, come on, he says, we're having a lot of fun, but I have to try to work it out with my girlfriend. I was devastated because I kept thinking, oh, he just said that, maybe he was just afraid, maybe he was nervous, maybe he just doesn't want to get, no, 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 he has a girlfriend. <laughs> okay, so that was it, and that was the end of it, and I never saw him again for 30 fucking years, and now, Jack slash Jake is on <laughs> West Broadway with a very attractive wife, and he probably has very healthy children. And we're talking, and all I'm thinking about is all the things that I've done over the years that inform me to get back to Jack. For instance, I note, my husband and I took drumming lessons. <laughs> now, we never mentioned to Keith my interest in drums, but we went to the learning annex, obviously the best place to learn how to drum. And what they taught us there, I swear I'm not making this up, they teach you this, please pass the tartar sauce to drums, to bongo drums. That's all they teach you, please pass, and they give you all bongos, and there's a class filled with people, and it's like in kindergarten where you get stuck with the triangle, you don't get to choose your drums, you just give, you, you take what they give you. So like if the Red Lobster had like a special one night and they needed entertainment, we could sing, please pass the tartar sauce. That's as far as we got in our drumming. But I just, the idea of being around drums was so sexy and fabulous. And my husband, who's so great, but he's a dentist and he's not a drummer. He's not a, I mean, I love him. He's not a drummer. All right, so, all right. So when I see Jack slash Jake, I say, it's been so great, and he goes, I really love it if you come see my show. And I say, yeah, I'm gonna really try, but the bottom line is, I have no intention of seeing my beautiful Ringo Starr when I was his wonderful little penny on the back of the bus with the hair who could go off and wander around and be on the ro with the road trip and, and all the roadies and I would be his girl. I, that wasn't gonna exist anymore. At some point, I think you have to kind of grow up or act your age, even though I still don't know how to do that. So <laughs> I thought, ah, and I didn't wanna go see him in that because why do I wanna see him as like Mel Brooks, I liked him <laughs> as Ringo Starr. So no, I won't probably see it, even though the guy is pretty terrific. But I'm married to someone who I adore, who can do wipeout on the steering wheel like nobody's business. <laughs> I'm serious. And if I can be with him and know that drummers go with ex-dancers, that's all the world that I need. Thank you. <laughs>